My name is Seku Sibi. I moved to the U.S. from the Ivory Coast in 1996. I began working at the World Trade Center Tower 1 at Windows on the World as a banquet cook. My name is Silas Resta. I moved to the United States from Nepal. I began working at World Trade Center Tower 1 in Windows on the World as a server in 2000. I was in shock. It was, I was in disbelief because I am Muslim. What kind of Muslim would want to kill a brother Muslim? I do not think that I will be able to judge Christianity based on what Timothy McVeigh did in Oklahoma. Uh, neither do I think that anybody should judge Islam based on what those uh, people who destroyed the Twin Tower did. The Quran in, its, in itself is a very clear, you know, we need to love each other and that's what we do. And we still believe in that religion. I am Muslim more than ever. Uh, and that's really uh, what the future holds for us. We are in one society, we will live together and uh, we just need to accept each other. We may be different, but we love each other. So after 9-11 tragedy, I learned more to get connected, know each other, to feel the pain about this. So I feel I'm so strong for our mankind and for common goals. So we are working very hard to gain the momentum so we, we, can, we can do it. I feel I am trying to survive. It's a very meaningful life. That's what I learned. In times of, of tragedy, there are, I really we have two options. Uh, we can uh, sit and moan and complain about who did this or why did it happen. Or we may decide there are people who need help. I may be a stronger person. Why don't I stand up and help those who are in need? My name is Fikak Mamdu. I'm from Morocco. I came to the United States in 1987. And I started working at the World Trade Center Tower 1 at Windows in the World in 1996. My name is Jerry Bogas. I'm a 52-year-old Bronx resident. I started working at the World Trade Center in the North Tower on the 82nd floor in 1997. I was in that location on the 82nd floor on 9-11. Uh, so how many colleagues were killed of yours on that day? We used to have 450 workers. So that day, 73, uh, 73 workers and management died there. People that work inside, uh, we create an organization called Restaurant Opportunity Center. First, we start helping the victim, you know, to go and, and just navigate the system. You know, the government puts a huge tent here in Pierre 94, and in that tent, when you go inside, there is a lot of help. There is FEMA, there is Red Cross, there is... And some of our members, especially the Muslim ones and the undocumented ones, could not go inside because they were scared. So they will come to us at the center and we will go with them inside and try to help them. The Restaurant Opportunity Center of New York, now it's in eight states, helping not just the immigrants or the people of color or uh, people that work at Windows in the World, it's helping. We have more than 7,500 7, members all over the country. I, we have offices in eight states. We, we you know, do we laws that will help restaurant workers, that will help immigrants, that will help you know, people to advance in the job. So we, we from the ashes of Windows and World of, of that tragedy, we create something great that is gonna last forever. And this is all tribute to all the 73 people that we lost that day. It sounds like 9-11 really changed your life a lot. How did it change your outlook and your goals? As a Muslim after 9-11, I see it in the eyes of a lot of Americans that they hate me or they, they, they wish I'm, I, I don't exist just because I'm a Muslim. And the great thing about this country, we are all together in it. We cannot advance if you are not looking after each other. You know, your neighbors, everybody. We, we, we have to be a family. That's how we're going to succeed. So now, 10 years later, is the effect still there the same way? Is it getting better or worse? Is it the same? For, for me, as, as a leader in my community, I don't see it getting any better, especially to the Muslim community. It's an excuse now to come and say any word you want about Muslim. 9-11 give them that green light. You know, it's just we are the underdog today, and we have to show people that this is not us. We are better than that. Although we were close to where the plane crashed, we were below it, we all had an opportunity to try to get out. 
and there were three of our colleagues who didn't leave right away, and they were they were all killed. So, when did you find out that Muslim did the attack? What was your feeling? Honestly, the fact that it, Muslims were involved was not surprising. You know, uh, I guess we have an image, or some of us have an image in our, in our heads of terrorists being Muslims, mostly, you know, which isn't true, but that's the image that you have, or at least that I had. Muslims were victims too. It didn't matter to the attackers who we were. It didn't matter who we were to each other. We were all intended victims. In the stairwell, we were all just trying to get out. We were trying to survive. If you look back at American history, there have always been groups that come to this country and are you know, pointed out or held apart. In all those instances, the civil rights movement and how uh, immigrant groups became part of society, it's always had to do with personal contact. And that's one thing that the attackers here, I think we're trying to drive people apart, that their stock in trade is everybody being divided. That's where they get power from. In my world, my better world, the extremists would be overwhelmed by not being able to separate. You know, they could be off on the fringes, but they're not separating people because there's so much contact that people can't be separated. That's my better world.